So I wanted to talk uh, quickly today about using the builder pattern in Go. Um, when you're writing lots of concurrent code, parallel code, like you're going to be doing in Go, you're going to run up with um, a lot of potential race conditions. Race conditions are where you're going to read something in one place and write the same thing in a different place. Um, and specifically with uh, structs, with types um, that you define, you're going to want to try and guard against this uh, as best you can. Um, and there's a couple of ways that we can do this in Go, but I think one of the best ways is the builder pattern. Um, in Rust, you have things like the borrow checker, right, where you can define a lease, offer a lease to an object so that only one routine can write it while a concurrent thread can uh, uh, you know, knows that it's being written and synchronously reads it. In, in Go, we don't have that virtue, so we need to think about this for ourselves. So I want to demonstrate a bit of the problem to you, and then we'll walk through a couple of the solutions and why the builder pattern might be the best one, or in my opinion, one of the best anyway. So you can see on the right-hand side here, I've defined this person type, okay, with just two arbitrary fields for now. Um, and they're exported, so on the right hand side in a different package, uh, you'll see that I'll be able to modify them. For example, I can set name here to John um, and age to 30, for example. Okay, and I can modify that. I can set it on here. Um, I can update name here. Uh, um, it's completely mutable, I can change uh, John's name to Sally, um, and you know you'll see that that's that's perfectly you know perfectly fine. And the problem with this, as you can see, this type being mutable is, for example, if in a separate Go routine I was reading a uh, name, I was trying to read this name property on Sally or what was John now Sally, depending on whether my concurrent read happens um, before or after I change this value, I'm going to get a different result. This is a race condition. Um, now you can do a couple of things to try and ward against this. Um, one of them is, you know, you don't necessarily share memory between Go routines, which is a good good practice in general in Go. Um, you should communicate to, to share memory. Um, but even so, you're going to be wanting to change objects, change values, which might be passed into two separate Go routines. And in that case, you want to make sure that those are immutable, that they cannot be changed by either Go routine that would cause a race condition. Um, one of the ways to do this would be simply to um, make these values uh, unexported uh, like this. Um, now you'll see on the right hand side, these are no longer exported. Um, so the problem here is that I can't actually uh, set these, right? So these can't be set at all, so they can't be used outside of the people package. That's not necessarily very useful. Um, so, uh, so this is probably pretty much a no-go if you're gonna to wanna to be constructing objects outside of the package. Now, one way you might overcome this is uh, you probably see this quite frequently, is with a constructor. So you might uh, take a constructor for the people package, which takes an age, uh, and then return the person. So what we're doing here, uh, let me just move, make this window a little bigger. Um, so what we're doing here is um, meaning, making, uh, yeah, construction of this, of this person type only possible um, in in uh, inside the people package. So now we can set name uh, equal to name, a, uh, sorry, uh, name equal to name, age equal to age, right? So now uh, if we come back over here, uh, we don't we don't construct struct, struct literals now anymore. Uh, we instead, uh, let me s fix this. Instead, we call people dot new um, with our name and our 
age and we're going to get back our person um, and then we can just to clarify what we've got we can print you know p dot name um, so let me run this um, and what you see is you know the debugger is sorry the uh, the, con the uh, compiler is complaining because we can't access name um, so we would actually have to define on this side uh, a getter for example let's say p person get name uh, returns name Uh, and this works, or should work now. Ah, I've got an extra parentheses. So you can see now that works. So what we have uh, here is an immutable object because I can now read this value by calling the getter. Um, oh, sorry, one second. But I can't change the name. This is a, an invalid operation now okay I can't change the name it's, it's immutable because the, the field is not exported so the constructor is a good way of creating immutable objects but if we were creating a real person here this constructor could get quite large if we wanted to define all the things about a person perhaps we wanted to find their address we wanted to define their favorite color um, etc etc Suddenly this, this constructor is getting very unmanageable. It's getting quite unwieldy. It's gonna be absolutely huge. You know, another common way of setting fields in a kind of controlled manner in Go is to use uh, the setter getter pattern. Um, so we can define a setter, for example, on the, on the right hand side here, we've got this set name defined. So on the right hand side, we can call uh, set name and set John, and then we can read that. Um, and you can see the value is set to John. But the problem still remains that this is uh, mutable, so I can still change this outside of the package, for example, in one go routine. Um, let me log that. Um, so it's still mutable. We still have this mutability problem. Um, so what we're coming to is understanding what exactly what we can do with the builder pattern to define setters just like this but make them essentially uh, solidify the object once we're happy with it so that it can't be uh, reset again um, so what we can do is we can do that right now if I just expand this right hand side quickly um, so if we modify this person to be a person builder uh, and do the same here um, then we can create a setter on the uh, person builder here we can set the name um, we can do the same for age as well so let me uh, make this age setter Right, this gives us a setter for each on this person builder. Um, and what we want then is this a final method on the builder. Um, person builder, which we'll call uh, build. And what this is gonna return is a solidified immutable version of the person, um, which at the moment we haven't, we haven't defined yet. So if I now define the type person, uh, and out of laziness, I will copy um, copy all of the fields from the person builder. 
The build uh, method is going to return this new person type. Um, name is the builder name, age is the builder age. Um, but what, what this, this builder pan essentially is doing is separating the setters, which belong to the builder, from the getters, which will belong to the built person. Um, so for example, if I just copy this and I'll define uh, get age as well, just so we have a, a full example, a working example, um, like this, okay. Yeah, so just to clarify, so we have this person builder type, which has all of the setters for this person, which means that we can call the setter from outside of the package and set all these values. And then when we're done, we have this build type, build method, sorry, which is going to return the person type. And unlike the builder, the person type only has getters. So it means that we can read these values, but we can't write them. Um, so if we if we uh, go back over to the right hand side here, uh, we can see that in action. Um, so we can get a new person. Um, we can call uh, p dot. Uh, sorry, we don't want a new person. We want a new person builder. We can set our name to uh, John. We can set our age to uh, 30, for example. Um, and then, uh, and, and of course, if we wanted to change our name prior to building, we can change the name here to Jill, for example. That's perfectly fine. But once we're done, we call p.built. Um, and I'll just name this uh, a little bit better. So that's B for builder. Um, and then we can call this P. So the build type will return uh, a person. And the person you'll see, we can't change the name. Um, although we can read it. Let's also do get age. Okay, and then we'll give this a go. So what you can see is that this has given us this initially mutable type, which we can set, um, you know, set age with these construct with these methods. Um, we could even, you know, simplify this if we didn't want to use the setters. You don't even need the setters. You could just make on the person builder uh, these types, you know, public. If you wanted a very simple version, you could set them on the person builder directly. And then either way, as soon as you call build, you get back this immutable type, the built type, which is now solidified all of the properties you set on the builder. So you know, unlike setting um, export unexported types, you can modify these in any package. Um, unlike using you know setters um, in the standard way, you can't modify the value once it's been built. So it gives you you know by separating the type which has the setters and the getters, you get all of this flexibility. And then when you decide to the immutability, so that you can be confident that you're not adding race conditions when you're sharing these types around in your code. Um, so that's the builder type. I, uh, it's one of my absolute favorites. I think it's a really important um, design pattern when you're working with very high concurrent code, as you probably are if you're right and go. Um, give it a try. Let me know what you think. Uh, 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 feel free to ask any questions, um, and I'll see you soon.